And with all these successful relationships that I've witnessed, they all have another commonality, which is they check in with each other on a regular basis, you know, not just mm-hmm. once a year for their anniversary to be like, whew, we made it through another one. You know, <laughs> monthly, you know, mm-hmm. being like, oh, what are your goals? Mm-hmm. And how am I, how can I support them? Because that's really what we're looking for, right? In a relationship mm-hmm. is is acceptance. Right. Is like, you know, goes hand in hand with love. And if you're feeling like you aren't being accepted or you're being judged, then um, we start to spiral. Do you remember what it feels like to be comfortable in your own skin? Not just confident, but also pain-free, relaxed, healthy, and carefree? Think about the most robust version of your own childhood body. This is what lifiness feels like, a joyful spirit and a vibrant physical state of being. I'm your guide, Professor Sarah, storyteller, teacher, and wellness enthusiast. Reach into the vitality of your own girlhood to supercharge your grown-up life. Welcome to another episode of Lifiness, and thank you for joining me. I want to tell you a story today before we talk to our guest, Um, but first a reminder to go ahead and follow me on Instagram at Book of Lifiness. So once upon a time, shortly after I was divorced, two young kids at the time, and I met someone and we fell in love and we moved in together, probably within a year of knowing each other. Um, He was newly divorced. I was newly divorced. We had six kids between the two of us. So yeah, a nice big old household. Um, And we had a lot of fun for the first few months of that um, experiment. But what we learned quickly is that uh, I was the fun parent in my marriage and he was the fun parent in his marriage. And together we were so much fun. It felt like a party every day, um, but nothing really got done. Um, Things didn't move forward. Uh, No one locked the doors. Um, (laughs) We would cook elaborate meals, but it would take forever to clean up. Um, So, of course, quickly resentment started building and it was kind of a disaster in the end. Um, Long story short, we're not together anymore, uh, but he was a wonderful person. I was probably less of a wonderful person once (laughs) once things kind of um, came to a head in that situation. But um, what I did learn and I didn't even have words for it, um, but now I know, is that both of us were kind of operating in a very kind of feminine space. That's not to say that he was a feminine person on the outside, but that he was very playful, um, and so was I, uh, in a in a very innocent way. I don't mean he was a player. I, it was more like he and I had lots of fun together, Um but we weren't exactly balanced in our feminine and masculine energy, which I did not know what was going on at the time. I figured more playful, fun stuff, um, the better. Um, It maybe didn't help with the fact that we had, between the two of us, five daughters, so a lot of feminine energy. (laughs) Um, I don't think I had the words for this, or I I had never really thought about these concepts But today, what we're going to talk about is the divine feminine and the divine masculine um, and how they operate within the individual and then also between couples. I've only recently got interested in these concepts. Um, Today's theme may sound like it's getting into a little supernatural realm, but actually it has a very grounded and practical application. So first, I just want to be clear about this concept of divine feminine and masculine energies. Um, 
They, like I said, they're relatively new concepts for me. So I'm just going to tell you how they operate in my limited experience. And then we'll hear from our expert, Summer Van Moon. Um, I had a couple of amazing and powerful relationships that I learned a lot from. But now I am in the best and most supportive relationship of my life. Um, that's not to say that previous partners weren't great, uh, but it's more likely that I wasn't up for the task. Um, you know, maybe a little bit of both. Uh, my current significant other, he is beautiful and wonderful and amazing, but so am I, I think, like at this point in my life, I'm just kind of ready for this um, very gratifying relationship. Um, <clears throat> of course, there's a lot to this, so I'm not going to explain everything um, that works and doesn't work here. But for the purposes of this podcast, I think my greatest discovery is getting really comfortable with my own unique type of energy, just kind of like the natural energy that I come to the relationship with. Um, and just as a disclaimer, I'm speaking from a heterosexual woman's perspective with a fairly traditional upbringing in a current relation that's fairly conventional when it comes to masculine and feminine energies and roles. Uh, not that we're talking about gender today, but it can be helpful to know where I'm coming from and I also want folks to know that the divine feminine and divine masculine energies exist in each of us. Um, they're just these terms, these concepts that we use here to illustrate what may be happening between partners in a romantic relationship, but sometimes is a balance that's happening within one person. Um, so in regards to lifiness, you probably can tell that these characteristics, the ones that define lifiness, are quite feminine in the traditional sense. So they're qualities that I happen to think um, have not been given enough credit in the world, like this world that emphasizes for both men and women to constantly achieve, do, finish, organize, hustle, grind, all of those things. Not that there's anything wrong with them, but again, it, there does seem to be an imbalance, which is kind of the purpose of having a podcast like this. It just so happens that my gifts for most of my life have been more on the side of playing, going with the flow, accommodating, harmonizing, resting, relaxing, holding space, um, and then perhaps at the dysfunctional end of that spectrum maybe disengaging, freezing, sleeping too much, not having boundaries, all of those things. Um, obviously, I've also learned how to organize, how to work, how to take action, all of these things that I need to do to live my life. Um, so I have learned how to harness masculine energy, um, just like every person has a little bit of both. What I've noticed to be absolutely beautiful in my life is when my natural inclinations and energies align and match with the energies of my partner. But what's really nice about it is that it's not stuck in biological differences. Everyone, as Summer will explain, has their own unique expression of hormones, emotions, cycles. And so finding an ideal partner, regardless of gender, has a lot to do with you knowing yourself and your needs. But I just think this is a helpful template to talk about relationships. And it can kind of make you, um, it, it can push us to the point of dysfunction when we're trying to do too much, when we're trying to um, operate too much in our masculine or too much in our feminine. Um, I, I certainly have heard these terms, wounded feminine and wounded masculine a lot these days. So when you're operating in the wounded feminine, um, it sometimes means that you're being um, overly manipulative. Um, you're not getting your needs met. So you are so that you're kind of passive aggressively trying to get things done. Um, but when you lean into your natural energies, it can be gratifying and functional and all around pleasurable as long as you've made sure to examine them first. Um, it feels good to me. It feels good to my partner. And we have a free flowing discussion about this kind of thing. So that always helps as well. So my guest today is Summer Van Moon. 
a beautiful person who I have known of for several years. She lives in my community, but I never really got to know her um, and what she does. Uh, Basically, Summer is an ordained minister. Um, She is a holistic healer. Um, She works, she does energy work. She's a a Reiki master. Um, Her background is in psychology, so from traditional schooling, but she also has a degree from the Hawaii Healing Arts College um, in therapeutic massage and the healing arts. She performs ceremonies and celebrations um, for all different s- phases of life, whether that's a wedding, um, she can do, sp- she does spiritual couples counseling, uh, she officiates weddings, she does baby blessings and cronehood ceremonies. And she founded a ministry several years ago called Body Art and Soul Center. So, what I hope for you to get out of this is just. Um, a way to think about things differently uh, when it comes to the space of relationships and that feminine and masculine balance that a relationship has, but also each individual comes to the table with. So thank you so much for being on the show. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I think that it's such a beautiful mission and um, concept. I'm so happy to be part of it. Yay. Awesome. Okay, so let's just get right into it. I think, um, so the first thing I like to do with all my guests is talk about playfulness in their own life. So what do you do on a daily or weekly basis to kind of stay, like keep some playfulness in your adulthood? I absolutely think that playfulness is essential. You know, I have different goals I want to achieve, like with what I'm creating um, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually, and physically with our bodies. And I find that if um, I need to bring a lot of play to all of those areas, otherwise, I'll feel really, um, I won't want to do a lot of the stuff I have to do. And so Mm -hmm. like, in my physical practice, I have to swim or Mm -hmm. Um, do an exercise class that is intriguing to me that I haven't tried. And swimming is because I've always been a swimmer. So I just enjoy it. I think playing like for, I'm a business owner and there's so many things that I don't like about owning a business, mostly all of the like book work and um, Mm -hmm. admin. So I make like a date for myself. And I light a candle and I'll dress up and, Mm -hmm. you know, be like, okay, I have a little date with my office and myself Mm -hmm. and my, um, and I kind of see it like is bringing that divine masculine into my life, like in Mm -hmm. the areas like um, my counseling business is very feminine. Right. Mm -hmm. And so the things I don't like to do, um, going out and finding leads, um, all the book work mm-hmm. and like I feel like the mathiness, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> seeing that you know I'm mm-hmm. coming ahead instead of behind. I feel like our masculine, and so that's like when I have a date with myself and I try to make it um, special and fun instead of like, oh gosh, this is something I have, like I don't want to do, like I have yeah. to do it, but I try to want to do it. I love that. It's like you have a d- you have a date with your. Um, divine masculine, like kind of taking, taking you by the hand to kind of help you, you know, get the feminine chaos in order. (laughs) Um, So I'm glad you, I'm glad you mentioned divine energies, um, because that's what I want to really focus on today. Um, I think I mentioned in my email to you that I am so curious about your work. I've only recently, like maybe in the last year, really acknowledged divine feminine and divine masculine in my own life. So what does that mean to you? Like for listeners who don't really delve into this kind of stuff, what is the practical application of understanding our divine feminine and divine masculine energies? Oh, I'm so glad that you asked that. I um, I, So I'm going to give you a little bit of background of who I am because I'm yeah, going to please. answer this kind of touches base on, on all of me, which is, um, 
I have a sciencey background, which is a surprise to a lot of people. I have a bachelor's of science I completed in psychology, but I started off um, pre-med. And then I really, um, in my practice, really wanted to work with people more holistically. And there wasn't, there's really, um, there's starting to become more space for that in a, in a traditional medical application, but really, I think as um, things have moved along, it's really hard for any doctor to practice in a holistic manner. Mm -hmm. So that um, caused me to basically leave like traditional school. And I wanted to really learn how we heal, Mm -hmm. which took me to the Hawaii Healing Arts College. And they taught um, not just massage therapy, but they taught indigenous healing and energy work and herbalism. Mm -hmm. Um, so I've been a practicing massage therapist and energy practitioner for about 20 years. And I've specialized with geriatrics and prenatal, which has led me into doing both birth and death doula work. Um, I created a ministry, um, to basically encapsulate the different mythologies that I would use to help people transition, um, in whatever part of life that they go through. And now I'm really focusing on is love and celebration. Mm -hmm. And I feel um, my experience in doing work with older couples and also people having babies um, has really allowed me a beautiful observational point um, Mm -hmm. to see what really works in relationships. um, And also um, combining that with my um, healing modalities and my psychology background and my, my biology background. Mm -hmm. So the divine masculine and feminine, what I love about this question is that we as people, um, you know, of course, I believe each one of us is a divine gift. We all have um, a strong connection to um, divine source is and we can bring as much of that into our lives um, when we are we become more and more aware of it. It grows. Mm-hmm. We also biologically both have, like everybody has masculine and feminine in them. Mm-hmm. You know, so if we look at how um, a baby <clears throat> or a fetus like create, but we all start yeah. with kind of yeah, like when the cell same. divides, like when the yeah, cells start dividing, yeah, yeah. yeah. So when we all, we all start with the same kind of sex cells, and then even as we manifest into male or female, we actually both have, um, kind of like the basic cellular elements in our being for the other sex. And we both have all the abilities to make all these different hormones that cause us to, behave on a more masculine or feminine way or to have a lower or higher voice or hair. Um, And then all of us have our own unique levels of these different hormones naturally. So each one of us is already um, our very own representation biologically of the masculine and feminine um, on different levels of expression. So that's fascinating. And then um, when we think about how we express our nature, you know, the divine feminine is really the energy of that which is holding space. And the divine masculine is that which is going to then like go out into space, Mm -hmm. right? to get something done. Mm -hmm. And then when we think about our behavior, whether or not we're male or female, um, we can think of how we do this, you know, more or less in different ways. And it's not uncommon to find um, many women that are uh, much more masculine, maybe in their behavior, um, because they are maybe very type A, Mm -hmm. uh, very uh, driven, maybe, um, very motivated and um, task oriented. And then we know other men that have um, an amazing ability to hold space and listen and counsel. 
And I think what's really cool in all different relationships I've witnessed that really work well is that people are aware of their own energies. And then we naturally find partners that can complement us. Mm -hmm. And then we can, um, the more we appreciate that complementary um, cycle in our love relationship, the more successful we are. Mm, I love that. I love that because uh, me and my boyfriend were talking, we talk a lot about like puzzle pieces, like, but that were puzzle pieces that kind of change and grow. But we, you know, when we met each other, we, we fit and we can, we can continue to fit and continue to grow, but like almost like biological uh, puzzle pieces. Mm. What I love about you um, identifying with that is your acknowledgement that it's not just the recognition of the fit, but it's how you're growing together. Mm. And if that, if you are still fitting, Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Um, Another thing like in recognizing each other is, is that growth. And with all these successful relationships I've witnessed, they all have another commonality, which is they check in with each other on a regular basis, you know, not just Mm -hmm. once a year for their anniversary to be like, whew, we made it through another one. (laughs) No, monthly, you know, Mm -hmm. being like, oh, what are your goals? Mm -hmm. And how am I, how can I support them? You know, or um, where are we even at? What's even important to us right now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because that changes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, I don't know. I just love, I love all of this. Like, I love that you acknowledge the biological and kind of how we have the potential almost as, you know, in utero to be man or woman. But, but on top of that, that we have that potential in our bodies, there's that emotional, biological, and kind of spiritual um, energies that we see here when it comes to masculine and feminine sides. So I, I think especially at this point in time, like in our culture, it's so important to be, to acknowledge that because people get so caught up in defending, well, you know, this is, this is what it means to be a man or to be gay. It's just such a beautiful idea of like, well, actually all these bodies, you know, we all had the potential um, with whatever unique makeup we express. You know, I really reflect on how much different ways of expression and people are at such different comfort levels with what they express and what they think is okay. And it's such a huge un unraveling or even like excavation of one's own beliefs Mm -hmm. to really um, be comfortable and really know ourselves and what um, what we really want or or need from our partners Mm -hmm. in that divine um, honoring of our of our femininity or masculinity Mm -hmm. yeah and it's it's funny. I um I love the name of your company. It's Body Art and Soul. Is that right? Yes. yes. But I want and I'm really curious to know, um, like how how in the world did these ideas for these services like arise? Because I've like I think the one that really caught my eye was like maybe you have a ceremony for like cronehood and like that's just so neat. It seems like we make a huge deal of weddings and weddings are beautiful and everything, but like, it'd be so cool if we could have ceremonies for other phases of life. It's, it really is. And I think that that is, um, you know, I wish that I were as brilliant to come up with all these ideas, but really how they've manifested is, um, I gave birth to my ministry about, um, in 2016 And so ever since then, you know, some people here and there would ask me to do weddings. And that's always been one of my favorite things because it's such a happy celebration. Mm -hmm. And because I was having people, um, helping people with, you know, giving birth, it was not uncommon at all to do baby blessings or 
mother to or made into mother ceremonies. And the croning um, has just become, I think there's been kind of like a little resurgence. Mm -hmm. um, just people have come to me and asked me like how to, you know, create that ceremony or if I, you know, help in facilitating it. And that is definitely um, something that, that we, it's such a perfect time to bring ceremony to life, especially I feel there's so many single women where we might not have that opportunity to celebrate that 50th wedding anniversary or, you know, like, what are we, we don't necessarily want to have like, you know, the 65th birthday party, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> or like any really mm -hmm. big numbers, you know? So, and, and we should honor our wisdom. Mm -hmm. Um, part of my rights through the shamanic training I've gone through is to understand how to create fire ceremonies and the despacho fire ceremony in particular is beautiful. And it's part of the um, Kero Indians from um, the high Andes that would have this fire ceremony tradition where they would create these beautiful, um, like mandalas out of dried goods and flowers to honor whatever it was they were going through or whatever they needed to pray for. So they would do it for not only celebrations if somebody was coming of age or getting married or um, wanting a baby, they would also do it for um, if in times of healing or in order to um, deliver prayers, you know, to divine source. Mm -hmm. um, I think ceremony really en enriches our lives. Mm -hmm. And I've um, helped other families, like in my, um, I've gone through other intuitive rites of passage. And one of them was um, to develop my gift of channeling I would channel artwork for families to heal and to be closer. Um, I've shortened this down to just a person wanting to doing soul portraits, but what I realized in doing the familial work or group work is you can do like a group mandala or a group art project, or you work on something together. And what is so essential about this, I didn't realize until I studied um, psychology is that um, you know, men and women communicate very differently. Mm -hmm. And women, we are so gifted with being able to, to be talkers and to have that sharing supported, you know, in our, um, in almost all communities. Yeah. And men are not so fortunate. And so men usually, if they're talking, it's, it's usually much more purposeful or it's supposed to be solving something or offering right. something. Doing um, something, right? Yeah. And, you know, they're, they're judged so much harshly on, on um, it's much, they, they make themselves much more vulnerable when they share. So because men are taskers and doers, if you can do something together, even like working on a puzzle, you know, yeah. or if you can, you know, do a project together, then like parallel, you know, then you can um, often open up pathways of communication much easier because it's not an eye to eye conversation. Wow. That's so, I love that. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah. It's funny. I hate doing puzzles so much, except when we're like all gathered, like the family and there's multi-generations, all of us almost like have, we're like, okay, well, if we sit side by side, we can all put a puzzle together um, or we can play this game, you know, and that kind of brings everyone together. So that's such, Absolutely. I love that idea. That is, that's beautiful. And when we're doing those things, it, it's, it's different too, because our intention is to be together you yeah. know, it, it changes that whole um, thing, like where if you're playing a game or something where it might be competitive, maybe in another group of peers, you know, when you're just really the focus is of spending time and maybe um, learning about one another, even if it's not to actually specifically communicate about any one thing. Yeah. It's um, yeah, it's a really beautiful opportunity. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. It it definitely kind of 
you know, it's for, for people in the group <laughs> or in the couple <laughs> who need who need a task at all times. It's definitely helpful. Okay, so yeah, so from that question, then let's talk about two or three things that you might suggest for listeners, specifically me, this listener here, <laughs> looking to strengthen their relationships and become more attuned to their romantic partner. Oh my goodness. There's, um, you know, I think the first thing is like acknowledging that willingness and then really, um, especially as we grow together to maintain our closeness and our intimacy, we really have to be mindful of taking time out. Um, and that can be done in so many ways. And it's really up to the couple to decide how often they need to take time out. Mm -hmm. There's one thing that is so popular and it's so important to, um, to understand our love languages and they have mm -hmm. all different kinds of books on um, the five different love languages. And, you know, it's one thing to understand our own love language. And I think that it's, I think I'm all five. You know, I like all, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> but we that's, definitely that's are. That's how I am too. Yeah. I like, I yeah. think there are four of them that I like equally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. But what's even more important than, um, mm -hmm. and so like if their love language is acts of service, but you don't like doing stuff, mm -hmm. this is going to lead to trouble, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. you know, and it, and so is that something that you can communicate and solve? Absolutely. You know, I, I do believe that love can overcome it, but it will take more cognitive awareness and maybe more, um, more of something else, you know? Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. And I think just the awareness yeah. itself can, can really, you know, shine a light on, um, you know, the weaknesses. And if you have that awareness, then you can work with it. Absolutely. Or like some things like to me, like giving gifts might not seem like it's a big deal to you, but maybe it is a big deal to you on your birthday, um, you know? And so it's yeah. important like to know, like do a little bit of like self-awareness detective work so you can help your partner know what they can do that makes you feel valued. Mm -hmm. So they aren't like grasping at straws. And then mm -hmm. really, if you are a gifts person, like spell it out for them. Okay. Yeah. Like yeah. one of the most important things that we can remember is that we are, nobody's a mind reader, even psychics or intuitives are not mind readers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, everybody needs a set of instructions to mm -hmm. do as many things as they can. And you're, if you want to be intimate with somebody, you have to be willing to give them the instructions to your heart. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. That's yeah. And not be judgy and be like, oh, well, they didn't do this thing. You know, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. how many people start fights and what could other be wise, be great relationships. That fear of judgment can just create so many walls and um, even resentments. Mm -hmm. Yeah. you know, between couples. I mean, cause that's really what we're looking for. Right. And a relationship mm -hmm. is, is acceptance right? is like, you know, goes hand in hand with love. And if you're feeling like you aren't being accepted or you're being judged, then um, we start to spiral into yeah. um, all the things that that fear creates. Yeah. Yeah. We just want to belong. We just want a sense of belonging. <laughs> We really um, do. Yeah. So um, just kind of shifting gears or maybe not shifting gears because I, I don't know what this is. <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> <laughs> maybe this is related. What is biofield therapy? I saw that on your website. Biofield therapy basically addresses all the various energy modalities. You okay. mentioned Reiki. Mm -hmm. So I'm a Reiki master, but I also... Um, do cranial sacral work, which is an energy modality that addresses the flow of energy from the sacrum to your cranium, mm -hmm. um, which is basically our hara line or um, our chakras. Mm -hmm. 
And there's also product healing and product healing works more with like using colors and specific chakras. And there's other energy modalities to like healing touch. But basically I really, um, I dove into energy work quite a bit when I noticed it being so helpful for my clients when I was doing Reiki or healing touch. And so I just wanted to know more and more. Mm -hmm. And I think the frustrating thing about energy, especially because we can't see it or measure it accurately with, you know, um, unless you have like really fancy tools that are really expensive is, you know, it's, um, I think it's just more of a mystery, the more, you know, yeah. <laughs> and it's just kind of accepting that it is amazing and that yeah. it is work that we all are energy. Yeah. So biofield therapy, um, when I work with people doing energy work, I can simply do Reiki, which transfers chi force energy, um, to the recipient. Mm -hmm. It's not my energy. Um, I'm like, I act as like a funnel for that. And really the other modalities combined just allow you to address um, like when you become accustomed to working with people energetically, you might feel that uh, there's different areas that are flowing more or less. Mm -hmm. In my work, this is usually revealed in visions. And I just feel like very much like a reporter and share what I see. and then. Um, it can always, and there's different things you can do if you want to, um, address it energetically or shift it. Um, and yeah, so it's a lot of fun. It always leaves, um, everybody feeling like they're shining brighter and feeling lighter, which is a real gift to me as well. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't feel like, um, although it does take energy, um, I never feel like, oh, I'm it's like so worn out, you know, like mm. especially not in a bad way. If I do it all day, it definitely does feel like you've done something, but in the best way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. that's wonderful. I had a Reiki massage on Friday and oh my gosh, I had all kinds of visions and I don't, I don't really know what I'm talking about when I'm talking about Reiki. Um, I'm not practiced enough, but um, you know, just actually getting the energy work done on me, but I would, I'm I'm going to explore a little bit more, but I want to ask you just a couple more questions. Jonathan and I have been together for six months and we've got a lot of great energy, of course, because it's only six months, right? <laughs> so it's easy stuff. But I wonder if, are are there any like services that you do just um, in terms of, I don't know, just energy therapy? Is there anything that we could do? Because we're both really interested in divine masculine and feminine. Would there be some sort of service or so talk the or? fun, the most fun thing um, I do offer um, couples counseling and I like just in creating your own wedding vows, which you yeah. are not there yet, but in doing that process, yeah, um, you really do uncover a lot of like your shared values, your shared goals, your vision of the future. So that's a lot of actual like fun work. Um, if you ever make it to that space where you feel like you want to do that. And mm -hmm. what I love is it doesn't even have to be a legal wedding. Like you can have a commitment ceremony where you mm -hmm. just want to commit and like make vows and be seen or witnessed yeah. by maybe yeah. just um, a few friends and, and like your version of the divine. Yeah, I think that love is definitely something to celebrate. One of the fun, fun things I offer that I think um, is a couple's reading. So I do divinations, Ooh. which are like tarot card readings or oracle readings. And a couple's reading is really where you do the couples come together mm -hmm. and each one receives a reading and you can look at the readings juxtaposed, you know, with each other and really have that sacred space open um, to ask questions to divine in that in that way yeah. what I love the more and more I do divinations is just how uncanny it is um like where people just seem to always relate to the cards and what comes up like I've never had one reading where somebody's like that's not I had one person that's like 
she wasn't, she was looking for love and it wasn't quite there yet. And she thought she did enough work. And I was basically telling her that she needed to do more work and she didn't like that answer, but mm-hmm. you could tell that it also was true because mm-hmm. there was a lot of resistance that came up, yeah. <laughs> which, yeah. which I think I always shows this, like, oh, okay. But, um, the coolest thing too, about a couple's reading is that it allows Um, a lot of different things to come up that you might never have brought up on your Mm. own. Oh, I like that. Yeah. No. And I love that. Yeah. And and Jonathan would definitely be up for something like that, which is beautiful about him. One of the things that I love about him is that he's open to it. I would, that sounds beautiful. So yeah, I will definitely touch base with you later about that. Um, I would love it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I do want to know just kind of to wrap things up, how just kind of turning, you told me a few things that you do to kind of keep a playful feminine energy in your life. Um, what would you recommend or what do you recommend sometimes for your clients just to have more joy and, uh, kind of playfulness in their lives? What would you recommend to listeners? Oh, you know, I think that making the space for it and inviting it in is the biggest. I think the biggest thing that robs us from joy is being too busy and not um, not making the space. Mm. And as soon as we we make the space or we decide that it's something we want, um, the next is to just like um, we have to be kind of detectives. So we have to kind of like, like play detective, like, what did I used to like doing when I was a kid? What did, um, what, maybe we have to try just new things, like try different classes, like try things that you've never done before. And just like a detective kind of be like, you know, maybe you hate it, but guess what? You never have to do it again. And if you find yourself like kind of enjoying something hold on to it for a minute like be present i love that i i love that because the getting curious and then staying with it that's so childlike you know not childish but childlike to like be curious and then when something feels good you just kind of like go with it you just you know lean into it yes well thank you so much for talking to me summer Thank you, thank you, thank you for having me and thank you for doing this. It's awesome. Uh, thank you for listening to this episode of Lifiness. I hope you enjoyed it and maybe learned something new that adds to your own sense of embodiment and fun. I'm Professor Sarah, and until next time, begin exploring a more playful and joyful you. Embrace that girlhood energy for life.